I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a veterinary dentist, and I'm going to demonstrate dental instrument sharpening on a periodontal curette, a luxator, and a periosteal elevator. Initially, we utilize an Arkansas field stone with oil that protects the instrument as we sharpen, keeping the shavings away from damaging the metal on the blade. When we position the instrument on the stone, we want to have that instrument uh, such that the blade is visible and we can come down with the blade and eliminate any dead space between the edge of that blade and the stone. And for a periosteal elevator and for a luxator, that places that instrument perpendicular to the stone itself. You can see I'm utilizing up to and about halfway on the lateral aspects of that periosteal elevator. When we're sharpening a periodontal curette, we have to take into consideration that only one side of that blade actually is the cutting side. So we have to make that determination on which side we need to sharpen. So looking at it in this orientation straight up and down with the toe, toe pointing at you, you'll be able to tell an angulation difference between the two sides. And if you look on the left side, you'll notice it's a little bit closer to the stone, and that's the side that cuts. So when we orient that onto the sharpening stone, that cutting side is right at and on that uh, sharpening stone. So what we want to do is close that gap between the sharp edge and the stone itself and once we do that we've got the correct angle and we can continue with sharpening. So you don't want any space between that blade and the sharpening stone when you're sharpening a curette. Uh, then when we're sharpening our luxators they are pretty much perpendicular just like the periosteal elevator was and we want to go up each side of those if they're winged elevators like or winged luxators like these are and uh, you can see how we how we can do that if that stone is flat on the table the problem with that is you've got to get a table level, you've got to use your hand that you're not used to using, either your left or your right hand, unless you're ambidextrous, it's a little bit cumbersome. So as, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit difficult to, to do that. So I recommend on every instrument that you actually pick up the sharpening stone so that you can have it at eye level, and that way you can move the stone and your hands in order to get the best orientation. You can do this on all three of these instruments and that way you make sure that that blade and that stone have no gap between them and that way you maximize your sharpening. And you can see it's much easier this way. So let's look at these instruments a little bit closer on an individual basis and I'm utilizing the top of a laptop so you can see the reflection and appreciate the blade on this periodontal curette. You can see here that we've got a gap between the edge of the blade, which is where we want to sharpen, and the actual laptop itself. You see how you can see the whole outline of the blade here. And here's the angle, here's the edge of that blade that we want to sharpen. So as we take our instrument and lean the handle toward us, we start to close that gap. And basically when we're sharpening periodontal curettes, we want to start at the heel of the instrument and work our way toward the tip or the toe of the instrument. And the number of passes that we take generally about four to five per area is all you need as you work your way uh, this, this way uh, from the heel to the toe. So um, let's look at closing the gap here. So take a look at this, take a look at that, and then look at this. 
You can see where we've closed that gap. Here's the edge of the instrument uh, on the heel where we're going to sharpen that. Look at here now, and then look here. We've closed that gap. So that's what you're after against that sharpening stone. And you, again, you want to work your way all the way to the tip of the instrument, sharpening four or five times as you go. So basically about uh, 15 to 20 passes uh, is plenty to sharpen that instrument. Here's a look at our periosteal elevator. And you can see uh, that we are, again, we've got a gap here. But if we move that toward perpendicular, you can see where we minimize or eliminate that gap. So this is the edge that we're sharpening here. And you can see there's, there's some debris on the face of this instrument. And we basically don't want to sharpen this portion of the instrument. This is where people make the mistake and feel that this is the surface that needs to be sharpened when it does not. And we should minimize any abrasion on this portion of the instrument. So it, it might be best rather than to use a sharpening stone to get this debris off of here, it might be best to use one of your periodontal curettes to scrape this so we minimize decreasing the volume of metal on this surface because as we do this gets thinner, it gets weaker and so we want to keep these instruments for life and we can only do that if we do not sharpen or, or abrade this with any significance. Now when your instruments get to the point where they're considerably dinged like this one is here and maybe on the side over here, you may need to get either a coarser stone or there are mechanical sharpening instruments or honing uh, devices that have diamond surfaces that you can use to take this edge and recreate it. And sometimes that needs to be done. You can also send those off or send them to uh, maybe even your local dentist who probably has instrumentation uh, like those mechanical devices that they can do that for you. So those are, those are other aspects of sharpening that you can consider, especially if you've got instruments that have significant dings like, like this one does. Again, for our Luxators, you can see this one's angled back probably at about a 45. And again, this is the edge that we want to sharpen. You can see that edge right here a little better and here. And then as we make that more perpendicular, we eliminate that space. And now we've got the edge of that down right onto that laptop or in our case of a clinical situation, our sharpening stone. In general, in regards to intervals between instrument sharpening, we know that research shows that 15 passes with a periodontal curette is enough to start to dull that instrument. So basically what we do is sharpen those instruments after every patient. And sometimes we sharpen those periodontal curettes, which we use pretty aggressively on root surfaces when we've got significant periodontal disease, as often as every several minutes if we're using them uh, quite frequently. So we want to make sure that those instruments stay sharp. It makes it so that the procedure goes as quickly as possible and we get the most use out of those instruments as we possibly can. As you've seen with the video, it doesn't take many passes at all to sharpen those instruments. So you can do them within, uh, you know, 10 seconds is enough, even less than that in some cases, to sharpen those instruments. So it doesn't take a considerable amount of time to do so while you're doing the procedure, or actually the technician can do that while the veterinarian is, is uh, between instruments and doing the procedures. So that's a rundown on veterinary dental instrument sharpening. These are the three most common instruments that we use in periodontal therapy and extractions.